Hi there YouTube, hi Divinity. Um, I think this is my first video response to you. Uh, I watched your video before lunch and over lunch I had a few thoughts um, that I'm, I want to share. I'm hoping I can do this video in one go, I don't want to kind of edit it or anything. Uh, I was interested, particularly you, you mentioned the National Guard used for breaking strikes and that hasn't happened since the 30s. Could that happen again? I fully expect that to happen again in the next five to ten years. Um, so let's apply some context uh, where we are now and why. We've had a long period of excessive credit creation and therefore asset price inflation. That's across the board, all asset classes, business, land, property. Yeah. So let's think about property, uh, an easy example. If you bought a house for two million 20 years ago, the value of that would have increased massively over the 20 years. Uh, it would have increased in excess of wages. Uh, why? Because the money supply was growing so quickly, excessive credit creation, hot money, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it reached, as we know, it reached a point a few years ago where it hit a limit. Uh, credit creation started to happen against high risk cash flows. Um, high risk cash flow, get, giving a mortgage to a low wage worker who's at a high risk of losing his job. That's credit creation against a high risk cash flow. The risks taken became excessive. Credit creation stopped. Um, and in a truly free market, it would have gone into reverse. We'd have had a credit contraction, the money supply would shrink. And the downside of that is that people with valuable assets would have lost a lot of money. People who bought assets particularly towards the end of the credit creation phase would have lost really a great deal of money. So if you bought the house for 30 million and the credit expansion stores the following year, you would probably, in a truly free market, you would lose most of that value. Um, arguably, that's what should have happened, but the government didn't want that. So they kept asset values high by propping up the money supply. They printed money and put it directly into the economy or quantitative easing is what it's called um, but it still has to be that has to be paid for that still has to be paid for because there's no such thing as a free lunch so all the Western countries particularly the United States have been devaluing their currencies so they're kind of race to the bottom they're all devaluing as quickly as they possibly can and the reason they do this is to effectively reduce wages so if your currency is devalued yeah, American exports are cheaper if the dollar is weaker. Yeah, makes sense. If you're selling to China and the dollar's weaker, that product's cheaper for the Chinese person. Yeah, so it makes it more attractive. So in terms of global purchasing power, American wages are falling, and um, big time, massively. Uh, a weaker dollar also means that imports cost more. So if you're an American worker. Some some products cost more, yeah, because they're imported. Add in the quantitative easing, and you have inflation. So domestic products cost more as well. As time goes on, they, they cost more, and that's where we are. And I think it's going to be like this for some time. We're going to have persistent price inflation. So prices are going up, but wages won't be keeping up. They won't be wages won't be increasing at the same rate as prices. So in effect workers wages are going to be stagnant or falling in real terms and that's where the rubber meets the road um, this is the sleight of hand <laughs> whereby the workers pay to keep the rich guys assets worth a lot when really you could argue the rich guy should have taken the hit yeah if there was no intervention the rich guy would have taken the hit but they're going to palm it off to workers um, if I was a worker how would I play it I was think this is what I was thinking about over lunch. If, yeah, if I was a worker, how would I play? The workers need to force wage increases in line with price inflation, okay? And the government is going to try and stop that happening. So, those are the two sides of the game. Um, I'd, I'd go with unions, collective bargaining, collective strike action. Uh, it's proved very effective in the past. Can workers organise themselves effectively? And most important, can they act cohesively? Yeah, the, the government has resources, got the National Guard, the police, uh, 
influence uh, with lawmakers uh, and the media but there are a lot more workers that's the big advantage there are many times more workers if all the workers acted in unison it would be a cakewalk the workers would win every time but it's much more difficult to keep a large number of people together politically yeah, it's, it's a hard thing to do, the more people you have the harder it is especially when everyone's interests are somewhat different uh, it makes it very easy to break people apart in a, in a kind of divide and conquer strategy for collective bargaining to be really effective you need people working together across industries even and they have to do it in lockstep and that's the that's the challenge so unionization if I was a worker unionization is what I'd be looking to but the challenge would be to keep them all working together in a cohesive uh, strategy the other thing is violence okay so people power this set uh, violence never solved anything right you've heard that all your life they teach it to everyone at school it's exactly the opposite of reality violence solves everything it's the most effective agent for political change so uh, a couple of examples Martin Luther King a peaceful man is held up as an example of what non-violent protests can achieve I don't think the guy achieved much if it was just him we'd never have heard of it yeah it, it was because there were more radical and violent activists that we hear about him so the situation where the establishment is threatened they will choose to work with the most moderate party or people campaigning for similar goals same with India yeah, Gandhi was the moderate the British government chose to work with when they realised they were going to have to compromise there were much more radical and violent people in India uh, Gandhi was chosen by the British government to work with her because of these other violent activists yeah that's how it really works but it gives the impression that peaceful people achieve things which I think I think they tend not to really in reality yeah so uh, I've rambled enough um, expect more strained labor relations over the next five to ten years form unions embrace violence have a good day